it be? Is that a Tim Kalashaw I see before me? Where have you been all my life? The prodigal son has returned. Oh, and I love the background. Mm. Oh, is there a background Peter here? Kimes looking one way, Clint Yates looking the other way, oh. and I'm like, hey, what do you want from me? Welcome back, Tim. Take some points. Let's go around the horn. Didn't even know the I first had word. That's interesting. <laughs> Wherever we are is college football here. The latest, well, we've got conference meetings all over the place today, running through our tape time. So, a full season seemingly doubtful right now, but you never know what's going on in the heads of Power 5 commissioners. You never know what's going on in the heads of Tim Kalashaw. I want you to take particular note, Nick Saban, Jim Harbaugh, advocating for a season today. They made their points about how they can create value for players and said players are a lot safer with us then running around at home. Saban said that. He had the numbers to back it up. So, Tim, what position are we in today? What are the calculations going on in these Power 5 commissioners' heads? Could tonight be the last night of college football? Or what could save the season? I mean, it, I don't know what can save it other than just waiting it out, uh, trying a little more, willing to take some risks. It seems very dark right now. You wonder what made the Mid-American Conference pull the plug the other day. And, and what do they see that nobody else does? But I think everybody sees it. But I would say if there's optimism, uh, and I don't even know if that's the right word, what Nick Saban said, most of what he said, I think, is, is absolutely correct. The big part being these players aren't going to get sick. They're not going to get the virus on the football field. They're going to get it with 20,000 students walking around on campus. Why is the whole story what we're doing for these players when the bigger story is what we're doing with these schools? And obviously a lot of people are having the school discussion separate from the football. But, you know, I, 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 think, I think you go to the end. I think you try as hard as you can. And you know it's nearly impossible, and it may be impossible. I don't think you give up this week. I, I think some presidents are you going don't. to okay. uh, go the other way, though. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> if I can ask a follow-up. You have said this privately, but now I think you'll say it on the air. Some have been critical of coaches saying, you know, players are safer with us. But you read Saban today. You saw his numbers. The positive test much lower with the Alabama program than it is in the state of Alabama, for example. Do you believe players could be safer on their teams on campus? Yeah, you know, I definitely do. I mean, I think that's a valid thing. I think Trevor Lawrence said that as well. I mean, the motivation is the biggest thing. Look, we know most of these kids that are 20 years old really don't fear the virus. Maybe they should a little more. Maybe they, maybe they don't have to if they're young and healthy. But they fear it in terms of testing positive and hurting their team and spreading it to their team. If there's no football, uh, they're not going to be social distancing. They're not going to be worried about it now. And more of them are going to get it. I totally believe that. Okay, and just because it's been such a long time for you, Tim. This is around the horn. We go around the horn. This isn't your FaceTime every topic. <laughs> Mina Kimes, let's bring you in here. What position is college football in okay. right now? Okay. Um, you know, yeah, you got a little too comfortable on that couch. Might want to rethink your setup there, Tim. Um, it's been a really revelatory 48 hours because this issue has been positioned as a debate, right, between people who are rooting for and against college football and media and coaches and players who want to play and players who don't. When the decision makers aren't any of them. They're certainly not us. They're university presidents who are acting on advice from lawyers and medical experts. And I'd love to hear from some of those medical experts right now, by the way, because they're the only ones uh, who don't have skin in the game compared to everyone else. And yes, you've got coaches right. saying, you know, our players are safe, they're testing positive at lower rates, but the environment they're in right now is not going to be the same environment they're in in November when they're playing football and there are ostensibly more students on some of these campuses. So it's still quite murky to me. I think the question we have to ask now is, okay, can these presidents' minds be changed? Can this car be turned around? I don't know. I think to do that, what you'd have to see is these schools admitting something that's, of course, a third rail in college sports, which is that these student athletes are not normal students. They have to be isolated and negotiated with, and I don't know if they're ever going to do that. Clinton Yates. 
what calculations are being made right now, do you think? Is it possible to save the season, or could tonight be the last night of the conference? I don't think so, but to quote a famous panelist on this program, as the only panelist here who went to a Mid-American Conference school, I can tell you the reason they canceled the season is because without the money games with the major conferences, they just can't afford to play. So that was as much a financial decision right. as anything else. But that being said, I think that there's a fundamental issue here that I actually happen to be in disagreement with a lot of people about, which is that playing football is simply not congruent with being safe. And so, sure, it might be the case that a lot of these student athletes get on campus and in that isolation mode, they're doing the best that they can. But that doesn't mean that actually putting together football games is going to be the safest way to handle them. So, yeah, maybe it is a matter of investing in your kids, making sure that you pay their health insurance and just keeping them there in the case that maybe there's a spring season and in general, the larger purposes of their health. So, no, I think all of this is a little bit contradictory, quite frankly, in terms of everybody's goals and what makes the most sense. So when you hear Saban say our, our team's safer, our numbers are far better than the national numbers, than, than the state <coughs> numbers, than even the campus numbers, you say what to that, Clinton? I would say that, look, that's great and all, but that doesn't mean that the production of putting on games in a conference mode is necessarily going to keep it at that place. They took decades to figure out how to get a daggone playoff system to find a national champion. I'm not assuming that the NCAA and everybody else is going to be able to figure out how to make some Power 5 power conference healthy in a non-bubble environment. Uh-uh. That's okay. too much work in too short a time. All this is happening while players are showing more unity and the and more power, of course, than ever. The we want to play movement. The line is now clearly stated, it's, it's there in the bottom, to create a college football players association. Clinton, how do you hear that and what type of impact do you think that might have? I hear it in two different ways. Number one, it's good to see guys and, come, and athletes coming together in order to state their message. But I'm still a little bit confused because the we want to play mantra states me, basically, we're willing to die. And on the other side of that, from the United front, it's kind of like, well, no, actually, we want to get paid and we want to be safe, which, again, do not seem to be operating in congruency with one another. Listen, my boy Brian Floyd said this on Twitter, okay? You can have a football season now or you can have amateurism later. You can't have both. And the way that they're doing it, you might have <coughs> either later because of this. And I just hope that they figure out what exactly they want to happen because everybody fighting for their own interests is going to create as much chaos as we already have. Mina Kimes, the We Want to Play movement. How did you read that? I actually read it as being quite congruent with the Players United movement, especially when you read the statement they yeah. put out last night um, because they want the same thing, which is the option to play. And they want the option not to play, by the way. They both sides want that. Uh, and they want the option to do it on their own terms. That is a sentiment that's not going to go away. And the mechanism for spreading that sentiment on social media is also not going to go away. And by the way, if these colleges and conferences want to postpone football and have it in the spring, they should engage with these players now, which is something obviously that didn't happen months ago. Because to me, that's going to make it much more likely to happen in the future. Tim Kalashaw, we've heard it from baseball players. You show up, tell us when and where we'll show up. You've heard it from football players. Tell us when and where you show up. Both those times, did they really mean it or was it part of a negotiation? How do you get the we want to play? I think, I think it was college. definitely a negotiation in baseball to try to win people over to their side. Right. Uh, I'm not totally yeah. sure it worked the way they wanted it to, but, it, but it, they are playing baseball at least. I think there's one problem. I, I agree mostly with what Mina and Clinton said, and everybody believes they should have not only some say in the safety of their sport, but you know, a lot more, getting a lot more input from the schools about what's going on. But th they've also picked a time when their, when their uh, ability to unionize isn't as much of a threat. I mean, when you have a normal football season and there's all these billions of dollars to be made uh, with uh, 100,000 seats filled every Saturday, the, the, the threat to strike or whatever players can threaten is enormous. Right now, administrators have so many things up in the air and trying to figure out how much money they're going to lose and sports they have to cut or whatever, however they want to perceive that, that the idea that players are going to do something to walk out, it's, it's almost like, well, look, we don't think we can play anyway. Uh, so th this isn't the greatest timing on that front. Tim, when you're seeing the, the numbers, and we're hearing hundreds and hundreds of the Pac-12 and then the Big Ten, um, do you believe, I mean, there's space for players to disagree on this? Some might want to play and, and think it's in their best interest to play, and others might want more power. Do you believe there's space to have disagreement among players here in a greater association? Man, there, there needs to be. There needs to be the people who, and, and you know, you can be on both sides. Uh, a lot of people yesterday were loving Trevor Lawrence. 
with his we want to play stands like, yeah, listen to Trevor Lawrence. He's the best player in the country. Let him play football. And then he and Justin Fields posted the, you know, the, the whole thing about the players being together, uh, forming a guild, so to speak. And everyone was, wait, what does Trevor Lawrence know? He's just a football player. He, why should we be listening to him? Well, I think you said this or something similar to this before, Clint. Both things can be true. You can want yeah. to play and you can want to be safe and you can want to be compensated you for your playing and all that. Most of them want to you play. Know, I, did, you see, right. yeah. did you see the Joe Burrows quote today? Burrows quote today was about, wow, if this would have happened to me last year, who knows? I might be looking for another job. I mean, and that, and that just strikes you so incredible. This is like saying, yes, Saban, you're right. These players have value. They might have value going forward to play and canceling the season – Mina Kimes could take that away from them. Yeah, which, which makes, by the way, Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence, who don't need this season as much as Joe Burrow did, right. all, Maybe the not more, those guys. all the yeah, more yeah, remarkable yeah. that they're willing to put their, you know, put themselves out there like this. Well, I want to take a full stop here for a second because the backgrounds, I mean, we are operating at our highest around the horn level right now. Mina Kimes, that's an A behind you. I, I, I love pavement, the band. <laughs> Little, little factoid, the, the music for Pardon the Eruption, not, not so different than Pavement's Cut Your Hair. And then, Ooh. Clint, you got an A-plus behind you. you got a scorecard of a World Series champion Washington team behind you. But Tim Kalashaw, once again, the good fellas, and, and a lot of people won't recognize this. You're wearing a yellow shirt. Yellow shirt is like a light motif in good That's kind of risky. Right? The first time you see Tommy DeVito, he's wearing a yellow shirt. <laughs> they're, they're moving yellow sweaters out of the bamboo lounge at one point. Excellent when when point. Henry goes and takes, the, takes the, the gun to the nose of Bruce, Who, what's Bruce wearing? A yellow shirt. All right, we're taking a break right here. I just needed to say that. Buy or sell is coming up next. That Dodgers <laughs> pass, we're going to talk about that. Oh, my goodness, this Dodgers pass. And a lot of people don't know this. This panel's love for the Phoenix Suns. Oh. The Suns oh, never God. set on the Around the Horn Empire in two minutes. The race for eight. The NBA's first play-in will play in because Memphis never wins. Phoenix never loses. Portland has Lillard throwing balls off guys' heads for baskets while scoring 51. Days after getting laughed at by Beverly and Morris for missing free throws. How great was all that? Pelicans bounced from all of it because they couldn't get wins. And here we are, wherever here is. Four teams, five and six and seven games under 500 competing for the spot. Clinton, who looks best? Who's got the best shot? Who do you want to see? Was all this fair to Memphis? Go ahead. I'm very disappointed in the Grizzlies for how they came out in the bubble. They were the team that I wanted to see do it and I thought was going to see do it. They are none of those. The Portland Trailblazers, however, <coughs> are on an incredible reclamation story with Nurkic coming back and with Melo finally stepping into the role that we all wanted. And some people think that they can give the Lakers a run for their money. I think they're the best story and the best basketball team in the bubble. Wait, who, who is some people? I think I know who you're talking about. But why Charles you tell Barkley, me? NBA, Hold out, you're calling 50 out Barkley. best players and Hall of Famer. Yeah. That's who thinks that. Yeah. I don't that's think a, that. that. That's a nice career move from Clinton, calling out Barkley. Let's see how it plays out for him. What Tim Gallishaw, let me start with this one. Was this fair to Memphis? And then how do you see all this playing out? I think if they were the New York Grizzlies or the L.A. Grizzlies, we'd all be saying, how did they put all these teams in the West into the bubble just to try to get the Grizzlies out of the way? But nobody... Nobody uh -huh. cares about Memphis. They get no love, so they, they're just the victims of this. They're still going to have the ability to win the play-in game, but the team they should play is the Phoenix Suns. I don't know how anybody cannot see that. They beat the Clippers. They beat Dallas. They're 5-0 and in the bubble. How do you beat perfection? Roll with the Suns. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. Our conference call went about 20 minutes deep on the Phoenix Suns before we went on. I had no idea there was so much love. How do you mess with perfection, Kalisho says, after – spending quite a bit of time in the Phoenix Suns with that tan you got. How about you, Mina Kimes? <laughs> I like the Suns, but seriously, Tim, ha have you been watching Portland? They are a three or four yeah. seed, right, in, in an eight seed's clothing. Um, and and I'm, I want them to advance because I actually think they can give the Lakers a series. They match up really well with them with that front court, right, of Nurkic and Collins. Gary Trent Jr. has made as many threes as half of the Lakers' threes combined, okay? They have the depth <laughs> to compete with them. They're really good. That's an incredible stat, Mina Kimes. Take a few more points. We'll move on. Fire Cell 2 staying in the bubble. The Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, where are we with the Sixers? Wherever we are with the Sixers. Embiid status uncertain. Simmons now two, out for two games. You know, we had heard this bubble-shortened season was supposed to be perfect for them. 
What do you buy? What do you sell? And even bigger than that, Mina, is the future hanging in the balance here for this team on, on what their direction should be? If Embiid is healthy, and that's a big if, because he's, if he's not shut it down, they've got no shot, then I think this is a good learning opportunity for the Sixers. Finally, you get to see if those net rating numbers from the season that tells you this team is better with just Embiid are true. I'm not sure they are against real competition, but I want to see it. A learning experience, Tim Kalashoff, for the Sixers right now? Is that what you're seeing? I got to think Sixers fans think they've been watching years of learning experiences now. <laughs> exactly. I'd like to see a little more <laughs> than that. I'm, you know, I would think, though, from Embiid, uh, th there's something to be said for that. He, we, we see him one night. He does play at an MVP level. Then the next night, it's not even close. Take the underdog role. See if you can carry this team a bit if you're healthy. Clint Yates? There are people that thought that this team was going to make the NBA Finals before the season started. And as you alluded to, Tony, the bubble situation was supposed to be great for them. Now they've got not only a surface problem as far as Embiid, whom I would shut down, but they've got a more existential problem as far as what Mina mentioned. I would not blow it up. I would shut down Embiid, though, because this team is not a team that's going to make it to the playoffs. All right, Tim, buy or sell three is your count. You know it's coming. <coughs> Doncic. Oh, that pass. Man, there are people who love this pass, and then there were people who overreacted to the overreaction about the pass, saying, well, Harden does this all the time. My guy does this all the time. Here's the thing. Giannis, quote, one of the most talented guys I've ever played, end quote, what he said about Doncic. So, Tim, you can buy or sell this being the unquestioned future of the NBA, or whether you saw something that makes you think Doncic over Giannis Saturday night, or maybe even Doncic and Giannis in the future. You know, I I'm buying almost everything about Doncic except finishing games, and that's what made this... This is important. Uh, the first game in the bubble, the Mavericks blew a lead against Houston, and by the time they got to overtime, Doncic looked like he was out of gas. Here he is throwing between the leg passes in, in overtime, having this ridiculous statistical line, and more importantly, closing out and winning a game against a good opponent. It's what the Mavericks have to be better at if they're going to do something. Clinton, did you hear Tim say he's buying everything about Doncic? Does that include Doncic over Giannis, I wonder? Go ahead, Clinton Yates. Right. I mean, look, the fact that he's even in the conversation for most improved player after being the rookie of the year tells you a ton about how much he's improved his actual game and not just been a style guy, which I think a lot of people bought into. Now you see the substance coming up. There's no way I'm buying Doncic over Giannis unless I'm building with Giannis around Doncic. It's just not the same player, but he is really exciting. times. Yeah, come on. I love Luca. He is going to be in the MVP conversation for years to come. But unless that tooth that Giannis is getting surgery on today is secretly the key to all of his powers, that makes <laughs> no sense, okay? Because uh, you can ask, oh, who do you want to build, build around? I don't know. The Bucks had the best team in the NBA. They seem to have figured out how to build around Giannis. Mm -hmm. One more. Buy yourself four. We got time. Draymond Green tampering, question mark. Let's talk about this. If the whole bubble is about everybody playing ping pong and fishing together. What, what is tampering, honestly? How big a deal for Green on TNT to say we have to get Devin Booker out of Phoenix, Mina Kimes? Is that $50,000 worth of a big deal? I oh, mean, to react like that after losing that much money and not care is amazing. Uh, it's a big deal not because of the tampering, but because he has not acknowledged how great the Suns are. This is, by the way, got to be a record for Suns talk on this show. They have proven <laughs> to be the real deal in this bubble. <laughs> great coaching. Aiton's been excellent. Obviously, Booker's a star. See why? Yeah, I mean, it was weird. Watching it live, it felt, I don't want to say inappropriate, but it felt mean. Again, the Suns are doing just fine. Last time I checked, the Warriors are the worst team in the league, Playboy. So you might want to figure out exactly who you're talking about. No, don't need Booker. He's doing just good. TC? I really don't think it was tampering. I mean, a team with Clay and Steph coming back next year doesn't really need Devin Booker taking shots away from them. And, and Draymond can handle the 50,000. Better than Suns. They can't leave the hotel room without, unless they're getting oral surgery like Giannis, everything is tampering now. I don't understand why he's having a problem with, with a guy going and saying that. All right, looks like Clinton Yates is uh, going to be in a front row seat here with some of the cyber fans watching a showdown between Kalashaw and Mina Kives coming mm. up when you win your first major, but maybe have a problem with the trophy celebration. That's next. And Oakland, Houston, what a series. I came to explore the wreck of Houston and Oakland in two minutes. Kimes, Tim Kalashaw, and Showdown all time. The head-to-head, -head, Kimes, 11. Kalashaw, 1. <laughs> How could that be true? Not oh true. My <laughs> Not so, true. Oakland and Houston.
Oakland has the best record in the league right now. Houston choking yeah. on the ashes in this brawl. Loriano and hitting coach Alex Cintron of uh, Houston. If there's anything we've learned in the last couple days, hitting coaches, bench coaches, <laughs> hands below your waist <clears throat> and just get out of the way, please. The brawl in the pandemic, how do you explain what transpired, Timmy? Uh, this is just Oakland flexing a bit, saying, look, we just swept you, we're running over you, and you were tired of your antics from a few years ago. We're better than you. Mm-hmm. Mina? I just continue to find it amazing and obviously ironic that suspensions are going to hit everyone but the Astros players yet again. <laughs> it might even hit their coach this time. Exactly. Point. Mina Kimes. Alishon, really, he can't solve this riddle that is kind. <laughs> Showdown two, let's talk about the most impressive thing from the weekend, maybe. Colin Morikawa. It's either Morikawa or TJ Warren, Mr. Bubble, but Morikawa down the back nine, four under, eagle on 16, second career major appearance. He won his first career major, and he's 23. Then he broke the trophy, but uh, I mean, we'll, give, we'll let that slide. A question that we may have asked before, Mina, is this the future of golf? I'll say so. Unlike my dear colleague, I didn't sit for 11 hours on that couch and watch all of this, but my Asian group text told me to tune in at the end, and I was impressed. Okay. <laughs> 11 hours would have been a short day this weekend, Mina. There were seven guys tied on the back nine at 10 under par. He won by two strokes. What a beautiful finish. All right, it's been so long, Kalashaw. Do you believe in miracles? Kalashaw takes down Kimes, coming from behind. 30 seconds of FaceTime. <clears throat> yes, I do believe in miracles. And I believe the first round, or whatever we're going to call what the NHL just had, uh, it also gets an A+. Uh, we all have to live with the fact that there aren't fans there, but they've done everything they can to at least make it look like a video game. And more important to Tony Reale, they have every team's uh, goal horn, their home sound in yes. goal. Thing. <laughs> Around the gold horns. You know yes. how much I love it in the hubble. Congrats, Tim. Welcome back.